Hello, Jeffy. So why don't we start with your introduction? So who are you? Yeah, sure. So let me give a short intro of myself. I'm Jeffy Gine. Uh, presently, I'm pursuing my master's in engineering in chemical engineering with a specialization in renewable energy in Cornell University, New York. Uh, before this, I was working in Coal India Limited. And that is when I started my IELTS preparation and started applying for uh, master's in different universities. And I got admitted to quite a few universities. Uh, like Cornell University and Columbia University from US, then the University of Manchester and University of Birmingham in UK. And uh, from Canada, I guess, I got offer letters from University of Toronto, uh, what, uh, University of Waterloo, Western University, University of Ottawa. And out of this, I selected Cornell University and I ended up here. I'm just wondering how you remembered all these things. <laughs> you know i got used to it it was it was a one year journey uh, i guess i started somewhere around september last week uh, sorry september last year and going through all the universities qs rankings how are the programs what are the career prospects so eventually uh, you get used to that and all these university names stay in your head Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So what about your eyes? So from where did it really get started? Even before eyes, why did you even decide to plan for study abroad? Okay. So I always wanted to do masters. Mm -hmm. uh, that was definitely one of my goals. And uh, then I searched uh, the research opportunities and what are the career prospects after masters. And uh, I really like the MNG program uh, being offered in foreign universities. So the best thing about this program is that you get to choose what courses you want. Mm -hmm. There is no compulsion that you have to learn the set of courses. I, I joined for chemical engineering and I just need to take uh, a few courses from chemical engineering, uh, 12 credits to be precise, and the rest of the course uh, i have to take 30 credits in total so mm. out of this uh, apart from the 12 credits rest of the courses can be decided by me if i want to specialize in data science i have the option for that if i want to specialize in ai i can choose those kind of courses mm. so uh, the path is really open and you get to choose what you want uh, so that's what made me to choose masters in foreign university and then I started with my IELTS preparation. Uh, that was when the real preparation started. Uh, and that's when I met you, luckily. <laughs> so it was in my, <laughs> it was in my start, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. So then IELTS preparation started. I was having little difficulty in speaking modules. And your sessions were really, really helpful. I guess I found your channel through telegram and you were rocking in telegram <laughs> <laughs> really and i got really convinced by what you were doing and after our first class it was confirmed that i am going to join celestial il mm -hmm. and the best thing was our interactive sessions and how we became really friends after the class you were not just a teacher you were almost like a guide so I'll be describing the IELTS preparation in detail. So mm -hmm. after the IELTS preparation, uh, not after, along with my IELTS preparation, I started applying for universities. I prepared SOPs. Mm -hmm. uh, so my strategy was that I prepared a general SOP, one master SOP. And then according to the uh, needs of different universities, I, ta I tailored it. Mm -hmm. So some universities, they... Uh, Keep a word limit. You can only upload 500 word SOP. So that thing, just show your best, the most important things that you want to highlight. And also I had prepared the LOR. I got it from my college. Uh, I got two LORs, uh, two academic LORs from my college mm -hmm. and one professional LOR. So these two things, they are really important. Uh, they matter a lot. And one suggestion from my part would be uh, you have your SOP to showcase who you are. Uh, so let the LOR be who you are from others' perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, don't just mention the same things that is there in the SOP that I got this much of mark. Uh, those are the things that they are anyway going to judge from your transcript. 
So mm. try to remove the uh, academic part from LOR. That is what I did. I just mentioned a uh, two or three lines that she is really strong in so on so subject. And that mm. was my professor's opinion about me. And I requested my professors to focus on incidents. Hmm. the uh, incidents and stories that they remember about me which would highlight uh, a certain quality of mine uh, hmm. for example i did my project in uh, vhsc so i was the leader of my project crew so uh, one of the lors was given by my project guide and so she mentioned how our uh, presentation went how was my involvement in the group how i guided the group how i led the group as a leader so mm-hmm. it was mostly about the incidents that i focused in lor because the other thing that they will surely get from your resume and transcript uh, so that's something that really helped me i believe and after that it was the application phase uh, that was really tiring <laughs> because it takes uh, i guess anywhere around 1 hour to 1 and a half hours just for the application procedure itself because they ask you the entire thing if you are sop and uh, resume and lors are ready uh, otherwise yeah. it's going to take more time after the application process i guess this was around december and uh, i would suggest that uh, i i would suggest not to wait till the last moment probably you can start your application process by october itself then uh, i was free during january and the results started coming around end of january and beginning of february mm-hmm. so after that started the real struggle because i got all these universities and it was really confusing and the best part was i received the offer letters from cornell university and columbia university on the same day uh, just one day before my birthday i remember it was on february 9 mm-hmm. so early morning i received the offer from columbia and uh, at night uh, around 11 and pm i received the one from cornell so that was almost like a birthday gift and yeah so january and february was pretty tiring because my schedule used to be like uh, as soon as i wake up in the morning i'll refresh the mail and check if there is any offer letter if there is any offer letter but uh, i really enjoyed that time as well the it was worth the wait and uh, i don't remember which university sent their offer letters after columbia and cornell i guess it was waterloo or some other university so then it was a big challenge to decide between cornell and columbia mm. uh, so columbia offered a two year ms program that is a research based ms mm. and cornell offered a one year uh, mnc so mnc is a professional masters program uh, mm-hmm. for those of you who don't know i'll explain it a bit uh, so there are two kinds of masters that you can uh, do in foreign countries one is the research based or thesis based masters they call it and that is the ms we are always used to hearing this word ms ms oh he is doing ms he is doing ms so uh, but there are two kinds of masters so the in uh, in an ms you have two years and you have to submit a thesis it's more, more into research based work and mm-hmm. it prepares prepares you mostly for phd so if you have plans to pursue a phd as well uh, i guess a ms degree would be uh, suitable and uh, one of the advantages is that since it's a two year program uh, you are a bit relaxed in terms of course work uh, you need not take as many credits as you take in an mnc degree but uh, it it really demands some intense research work from your side so for those of you who are interested in the research aspect uh, ms degree would be suitable and then comes the mnc or masters of engineering that is a professional masters degree and it's a one year program so it sets you up to work in a corporate world how you should be in a professional setting mm. but uh, one of the uh, i won't say disadvantages still uh the thing is that there isn't much relaxation in terms of course work so it's almost like whatever you are supposed to do in a two year program they have compressed it to a one year program and per semester you have to take 15 credits and also you have to submit a project not a thesis but a project uh which demands some uh, attention from you so the course work is really hectic 
uh, if you feel that you can manage everything in one year and you want to work in a corporate setting in a highly competitive professional environment then i would suggest mn uh, so what happened was uh, i just came and so the next day people started uh, talking about job and career fairs and uh, all that stuff <laughs> so the main focus is getting a job how to ace in the professional world that's with the mn degree uh, and obviously uh, there are difference in fee structures as well uh so ultimately after taking a lot of advice i guess i discussed with you as well uh yeah and i decided to go with the masters program in cornell university and apart from that there was a personal interest uh, in the sense that cornell university was offering a specialization in renewable energy mm-hmm. so i am specialized in renewable energy and that is something i am really interested uh, the field of renewable energy and carbon capture so yeah i ended up in cornell and then started the real journey of education loan arranging the funding part scholarships so uh finding scholarships was a little bit challenging uh because uh, there is uh, there is little funding for mnh program mm-hmm. uh, not not every university offers funding for mnh uh, but for ms programs you get a lot of funding from your university as well uh, so i searched little bit in different websites and linkedin also so i found out few scholarships uh, one was the jn tata endowment uh, for the higher education of indians then another one was the nss scholarship the narottam sekhariya foundation scholarship and the kc mahindra scholarship uh so uh, next uh, the process we started uh, preparing uh, sop for a scholarship lor and all the documentation work and i must say the uh, journey with scholarship was more tiring than the one with university because all these scholarships they award you the scholarship after four to five rounds of screening and uh, then started the visa interview process applying for visa so the scholarship interview and the visa process was going side by side then i had my visa interview during june 1st and 2nd it was pretty simple process so mostly if you are getting a top tier university in us there wouldn't be any problem with yeah. the visa so cornell is the 13th best university uh, globally so the visa interview was a cake walk and uh, i received the jn tata endowment uh, by august first week i guess and by august second week i landed here <laughs> so mm-hmm. now it's been one month and i'm really enjoying here along with the work there is course work and i am also doing some part time work uh, along with that and the project so i'm fully packed but uh you know it's a kind of hustling that you really enjoy mm-hmm. okay while you were preparing for ielts and you were writing as a person even searching for scholarships and colleges or universities you were working as well right yeah so how did you manage your time you must well, be pretty hectic so how did you manage your time yeah this is a question that i get always <laughs> <laughs> uh it, it it was hectic uh but uh, thankfully uh, my colleagues were quite supportive uh, they generally generally generously gave me the professional lor and yeah uh, what i felt is that when you really want something uh, mm. you find time for that no matter how busy you are so i had a 10 to 5 job and after coming back and i was Uh, attending a dance class as well so i used to reach uh, back uh, uh, around 6:30 so uh, at night i used to dedicate 2 to 2 and a half hours for this uh, for the uh, while i was preparing for ielts mostly i was dedicating time for ielts preparation and after that i dedicated some time for preparing sop as well and then the next day morning also so i had to go to my office around 9:45 that was an advantage i tried to uh, have two, uh, two hours in the morning as well for all the preparation then i used to carve out some time from my lunch break or uh, whenever i get some free time so this was in my mind so whenever i get free time my next immediate reaction would be okay 
that university oh, sop is pending and <laughs> and i was really organized that time i used to note down what all things i have to do i had a i had an excel sheet uh, for people this would sound really fancy but i really suggest you because in the beginning i uh, i really struggled with it because when you start applying to five to six universities and uh, when you cannot complete everything at a at a time suppose you would have uh, completed 30 percentage of university a and then 50 percentage of university b ultimately you get confused what is the status of each university and you know logging into the portal itself take two three minutes <laughs> you have to remember the password so i used to waste time uh logging into university's portal and i'll think oh yeah this is done i forgot so that is when i started creating a uh, excel sheet like the name of the university what is the status what is pending and in case i had any doubts regarding something uh, to be submitted so it can be customized according to your need uh, this was according to my personal need and then once an university is completed i used to color it green and it was such a relief to see oh my god green you know these kind of visual things it really motivates you mm. uh, that sense of achieving small goals or crossing out few things in your to do list so this thing really motivates you so uh, this google sheet it really helped me to keep in track what where i was and every morning i used to prioritize uh, i should be preparing this sop i should apply for this or i should uh, finish uh, two sample tests for ielts likewise somehow i managed it and now when i look back to my planner and my journal it feels so good you know i i can reminisce those days when i though i was so busy how i used to jot down everything and yeah lot of planning and stuff it feels so good now mm-hmm. okay and uh, just by listening to your english and whatever you have accomplished till now people will be having having one question she's a top up she must have been really good at academics and all so is that true were you really good at studies from the beginning itself or oh well, uh, i can i cannot claim myself to be a topper uh but uh, yeah, yeah i try uh, but i did try my level best during my bachelor's uh, i was not a 9 pointer uh, i was an 8 pointer i got 8.84 uh, and it's not the academics that uh, the universities look upon when deciding a, a candidate uh, mm-hmm. it's what what you have done through through the four years of your bachelor's or whatever program you are doing so i believe that a uh, few factors that helped me get into these top universities were uh, my work experience i was working in coal india which is one of the top 10 public sector undertaking and uh, my project i did my project in vikram sarabhai space center and then my internship Uh, my internship was in the field of bioethanol production which is one of the renewable source of energy uh, in association with hindustan petroleum green r&d center and along with that my extra curricular activities like i am a technical blog writer so mm-hmm. i could highlight my strengths that's what gave me admission i wouldn't say it was just my academics because there are so many people out there who have more marks than you but mm-hmm. even if you have uh, less marks uh, you can compensate it with other things and obviously my ielts score i got 8 point <laughs> sorry i didn't have forgotten that. yeah usually people don't get 8 in academic ielts so your score was 8.5 in reading and listening and 7 in writing and speaking right yeah yeah and you did your you got your your test date was on 15th october 2022 yeah exactly Okay, so how did IELTS help you? Ah, uh, IELTS. So I guess the best thing that I did regarding IELTS was, ah, mm-hmm. uh, I have seen many people ah uh, preparing for a desert bank. Hmm. Ah, uh, the cutoff that each university provides. Hmm. But I was thinking, I I'm never gonna prepare for getting a seven or seven point five. I'll give my best. i'll prepare for the highest band that i can aim for and then let it be according to the uh, exam pattern and what so 
that's how i got 8 and 8 is a pretty good band score so it really gave gave a boost to my application mm-hmm. so i did check uh, uh, so you have different websites where in when you enter your credentials they will show you the possible university uh, though it's not very accurate but it's accurate up to an extent so i had checked with different il score hypothetical il score and just a shift from 7 to 8 band the mm. universities that you may get it it just uh, you know goes up by nearly 50 to uh, 60 rank mm mm-hmm. so i had yeah, definitely so played the big role that most of the ielts candidates do when they get started is it not planning properly is it not taking classes or is it something else or just due to wala class uh, i think it's not planning properly uh, people tend to prepare for just a 6.5 or 7 so as i already mentioned i was aiming for 9 or 8.5 i mean i did preparation accordingly and that's when i landed in 8 mm. so that's something uh, i guess students lack that they just see ielts as a uh, as something uh, they just need to satisfy okay i got 6.5 yeah i am qualified it's not something that qualifies you it's some it's something that really gives you an edge over others so you should be taking ielts like that and another thing would be not focusing on your weakness when people are weak in reading or writing they tend to ignore it and they uh, tend to focus on the other things thinking that they can make up the score but if you can give some attention to your weak points as well i guess you are uh, band can come a long way for okay what was your weakest module uh so my weakest module was speaking uh and that's where you helped me a lot <laughs> <laughs> you were my biggest pillar of support uh during ielts in the speaking module uh in fact uh, the main problem that i was facing was that i lacked confidence uh, i didn't have a speaking partner uh i had people to speak to but i didn't have an ielts speaking partner the one who can understand how ielts speaking is supposed to me and give me uh, required feedback so after joining your class i guess i had improved it i had improved a lot and uh, speaking was something i struggled with mm-hmm. so why do you think you were struggling with it and what changes really happened other than confidence and uh, some enhancement in your speaking after you joined the class okay uh so the main reason why i was struggling was because i just i gave a presentation or i did something in english uh two years ago two or three years ago back in my back in my bachelor's But after that i didn't have much exposure in english language and i was working in coal india limited where everyone spoke in hindi uh so i i lacked confidence and uh, i don't know some somehow i was struggling with speaking and after that uh, first thing that you did was you improved my confidence and after speaking with you uh, after each session you were giving me relevant feedback uh, what is to be improved and uh, what i shouldn't be doing what i should do uh, and i still remember one of your suggestions that uh, when you are sitting idle just see an object and and try to think what you will be uh, speaking about it just try to frame five sentences about it so this is something that i did and it it was really a game changer for me and i never try to mug up any speaking uh, topic you know you get hundreds and thousands of speaking topics in the internet along with what you are supposed to say and also in makar the only thing that i did was i went through the topic and i framed few points in my mind okay if this question comes i can talk about these these things but i never uh, expanded it into a full sentence or i never learned them by heart and another thing was i tried to group topic similar topic uh, with common points suppose uh, you are asked to talk about a friend or a person whom you inspire the most or a person whom you love spending time with so these three questions are kind of similar and we can uh, introduce similar points so that is something that i did uh, grouping the similar topics into bunches and 
uh, creating common points and uh, other thing was i listened to few speaking videos uh, and also went through some idioms and phrases but uh, those are not that important they don't need all these fancy idioms and phrases from you and ultimately it yeah ultimately it was after joining your class that it it really made some changes and another thing i got consistent with my speaking practice after joining your class before that i would be speaking to i would be practicing the speaking module today and then for the next two days i would be concentrating on something else it was hard along with my job so uh, i had an excuse also oh, i am busy with the job so i cannot do the speaking but you made me consistent and also you narrated the story of how consistent you were how many hours you used to dedicate i guess it was almost 3 hours you used to dedicate during your preparation i was and it was not it was i speaking i was uh, basically arguing with people i'm making fun of you know i'm fun with people it was, yeah it was really motivating and this thing as well it never felt like i am attending a class it was so fun and along with fun i was learning things i was improving my speaking skills and uh, you were more than a uh, more than an ielts tutor you were a friend and you were a guide so that's what happened after joining celestial ielts mm -hmm. so what's the difference between my classes and you know normal classes uh, i i didn't enroll for normal classes uh, but i have seen couple of free tutorials that the coaching institutions offer so mostly they focus on teaching you the idioms and phrases they make you mug up the idioms and phrases and uh, i guess they are following a preset pattern and within 10 minutes it gets boring and the next time it's like oh god i have to attend that speaking session but with you it was always a conversation a heart to heart talk and it never felt like learning but i was learning things uh you were giving genuine feedback and uh, you really boosted my confidence uh with your class i could feel the change uh, but with other classes it was my confidence was going down oh god there are idioms and phrases like this i have to learn them but i have no clue how am i going to learn them this was what happened with other three classes and they were not that interactive but uh, with your classes it was so interactive and really helpful yeah and i think when you listen to a lot of youtube videos and actually other people there will be a lot of myths and i think i debunk some of the myths right uh yeah exactly mm -hmm. okay and i heard that you got a job as an ielts trainer in between so what is the story about that yeah <laughs> no this is a secret i can't reveal <laughs> <laughs> you should have asked. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, you who introduced me to the world of IELTS, and first I was an IELTS student, and then <laughs> you try first you trained me how to give IELTS, and then you trained me how to be an IELTS tutor. <laughs> uh, so uh, that was after that. Uh, even attending attending your classes, I understood how I should be. uh coaching other students as well so after that i started sharing my knowledge whatever i know regarding ielts with other students because i felt that uh there is a big cloud surrounding this ielts preparation that mm -hmm. only if you go to a coaching institute you can get get a good band or you have to allot so and so hours you should be good at speaking you should already have a very sound background in english all these things so it was i cannot call myself a tutor it was just me sharing my knowledge and helping them with speaking writing and uh, list classes mm -hmm. yeah you have changed a couple of lives i mean in the ielts way right ah uh, yeah and that you know, so like good you were kind of asking doubt like how to do this with this child <laughs> right ah uh, yeah so uh, in the beginning i was little struggling uh, how to give personalized feedback to each one uh but eventually uh, you get used to it and uh, i still remember shalu uh, mm -hmm. and her feedback uh, so uh, two months before she came back from singapore uh, she was staying in singapore for two months and when she came back 
she told me uh, miss i i went alone to singapore so she was literally struggling in speaking in the beginning it it used to be a herculean task to get few words of english out of her mouth but uh, now what she told is that uh, every year i visit singapore and every year i struggle speaking in english uh, during the customs check and other uh, checking hmm. and uh, i used to be very tense uh, for traveling alone and i i just walk with my husband i never get to uh, talk with anyone but this year things were different i could converse confidently uh i felt so confident and uh i was staying for two months so when my husband goes for a job i tried to mingle with others and uh, they could understand what i was talking and i could understand them as well uh and i have made a couple of friends in singapore and she was so happy she was on <laughs> she was on cloud nine that she could express herself so well in english because for her it was almost like a dream it was it was as if she did something that was impossible to her so touching students life like that it feels so good exactly okay and if anyone actually approaches you and asks for ielts classes will you suggest my classes and if yes or no why definitely <laughs> that's the first name that comes out of <laughs> it comes out of me because you changed the ielts journey for me and you have same style journey for a lot of other students as well so i want that the students should learn ielts in a in an entertaining manner uh, without uh, much pressure and they should be getting the relevant information uh, and the right information what is to be done and what is not to be done so uh, i guess you are the most apt person who can guide the students in the right manner Mm-hmm. Okay, so what are the things that a student should look for when they are joining any class or even doing something else? So while joining for a class, I would say that uh, the student should look for who the tutor is going to be, because ultimately it's not the institution that's going to teach you; it's the tutor who is going to teach you, and. if possible the student should have a conversation uh, beforehand itself uh, what are his strengths and what are his weakness and uh, if they can get a personalized attention that would be really good mm-hmm. another fact is that uh, what are the study materials that would be provided and uh, if they offer a mock test or not mock tests and mock interviews they are really important uh so that is something they should focus and uh, i won't say the timing of classes because uh, if these things go well it's up to you to manage time whether mm. the class is at midnight or early in the morning so you can manage the classes and the last thing would be the uh, fees uh, but it doesn't make much difference if you are getting quality content uh that is tailored according to your need go for it that's mm. what i would okay and what about your family were they supportive and how was their response when you got into the colleges or unis okay so my family was very supportive in the beginning just like any other indian family there were little apprehensions oh you are going that far to an entirely different time zone but i could easily convince them uh, stating that what i have achieved and what i would be achieving after the masters degree and they really know how much passionate i am towards chemical engineering so they were really supportive mm-hmm. okay and uh, weren't they afraid of sending a girl child to usa and all usually indian parents got that also so what's your opinion uh, yeah. yeah yeah definitely and i am a single child so you can imagine <laughs> they were apprehensive but uh, i have been staying in ranchi for the past 2 years mm. so they know that i can manage myself very well and uh, i have couple of friends i mean uh, people whom i know uh, in us uh, so somehow i convinced them even uh, i don't say that my parents are tension free uh, my 
my mom still says every day that i really miss you i don't know what is happening there <laughs> it's been so many days since i slept uh, 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 slept peacefully hmm. uh, but she also knows that uh, she also knows the value of this university the worth of this uh, course and uh, hmm. what i have achieved so it goes <laughs> like that i am chill <laughs> i don't have any tension i am really enjoying here but uh, i always try to reassure her uh, so for students who have issue from parents uh, i would say that don't pick up a fight with them because they belong to a different generation and we belong to another generation okay. it's up to you to convince them state what you will achieve what are your passion what are your interest uh, reaffirm with them that you would be able to manage by yourself manage your expenses uh, it, it's a long process i know but uh, over the course of time uh, when they see that what you have achieved they will they will agree that's what i feel so initially my mom was almost like telling no you are not going uh but then i started ielts preparation and that time she thought uh i wasn't serious then the ielts results came okay that was a stepping stone for me because oh she have eight band now how can i say no and then <laughs> then when i got all this long list of universities <laughs> there was no reason for her to say no mm-hmm. okay and i would say that uh if you plan to do your masters in a foreign university always try to aim for the best university and come here because you are genuinely interested to pursue a masters please don't come here thinking about the 20 hours part time work that you can do and the money you would earn just uh, you know aiming for a not so popular university that's not gonna work in the long run uh, always try for a very popular university that uh, sorry uh, not yeah. ivy league always <laughs> not ivy league always ivy league is in the us whichever country you want to go so people have different preferences and in that country uh, try to aim for the best university that's mm-hmm. what i would say okay and how is the student life and the american life mm-hmm. are are you living the american dream right now ah uh, no i want boss that i am living an american dream uh there are both ups and downs mm. so the student life also comes with its own challenges uh first of all the learning environment in the university it's so good it's so vibrant uh and the best thing that i already mentioned you get to choose your own courses you get to choose what you want to do mm. uh so that's something i really love about it and we have all the facilities Uh, i mean the library uh, uh, so many research centers so uh, back in india one of the problems that we used to face was our colleges except in iit uh, i i am not from an iit i did my bachelor's in tkm college of engineering we wouldn't be having the required instrumental setup even if we want to do some advanced projects so i was doing a project in defluoridation of drinking water it was uh, going in the nano scale uh, it was using nano ngo so ultimately it came to a stop because there was no uh, machines in the college to analyze the nano particles uh, i have to go to some other universities or something but here you have a lot of instruments uh, uh, for all the fields this is not just for engineering you have a law school here you have a hotel management school here you have an mba school here so it's different colleges they ask you which college you are <laughs> so the university it comprises of different colleges and you have something called college of human ecology college of biological sciences so there is a diverse environment you get to meet new people i have made friends with people from law school people from hotel management so uh you you won't stay in a bubble you won't stay in a bubble of your branch you will be interacting with lot of people so right now i am doing a part time job in statler hotel uh in the statler hotel kitchen so most of the students 
uh, there are from the hotel management school so i get to interact with them and i get to ask okay is, uh, this is what you learn is this so okay and also uh, we have the provision to take up few courses from the business school so i have taken couple of courses like management writing the business of entrepreneurship uh, then management consulting essential project management etc so many of the many of my classmates in these courses are from the business school mm-hmm. uh, and we get to interact with them as well so that's what i like about the student life it's so vibrant you have a hundred uh, maybe thousands of opportunities in front of you and uh, you get to interact with the uh, what do you say people in the industry as well uh we have career fairs and these weeks there is something called the coffee chat and info sessions going in the evening wherein uh, each company comes and gives a talk about them and we get to talk about ourselves and we get to introduce ourselves basically so likewise the learning environment is really supportive and the student life uh, for the first two weeks we had uh, weeks of welcome uh where in each department was welcoming us and we just felt like oh oh my god these weeks shouldn't end but right now i am into the core of courses and project work uh so it's it's a it's a bit hectic and then people have a misconception that once you reach a foreign country everything is a bed of roses but it's not that way i am doing a part time job so at times the part time job gets really late and i have to juggle between all the things and you are living on your own in a different country so you you take care of everything your cooking uh, washing dishes and everything so it it takes uh, it, it takes a while to get adjusted and to manage the time and at times part time jobs are also Uh, not hard i would say but you get to think oh i have to study i have to do the part time job uh, i feel like that as well uh, but ultimately when you see the longer long picture what you are going to achieve it feels okay but uh, don't come to us or any other foreign country thinking that you can just enjoy no uh, all the university demands a lot of coursework lot of effort from you uh and also it takes uh, some time to get adjusted with the new culture and the new food and new climate and different climate as well mm-hmm. what about the people uh people are really supportive so this was something uh i was really scared about how the people would be would there be any racial discrimination or anything as such so i never felt like i am in us or i am with uh, foreigners uh, you can see all kinds of people here so it, this is almost like a global village as i already told you there are diverse programs and there are people from diverse backgrounds as well you have people from almost every country so now you get to taste their cuisines uh, and the university also uh, what do you say acknowledge the fact that there are so many international students so there is a separate office for international students welfare and we had a different orientation for international students and they are there to guide you in each and everything re- uh, related to visa your part time employment and all those things and we have different dining halls here even in the dining halls it's not just american food that you get every day they ship the questions so uh, if it's korean person today uh, it would be japanese the next day so there is lot of inclusivity in the campus mm-hmm. and people are really really helpful uh, even if it's the professors or the staff or anyone mm-hmm. okay what is the difference that you are feeling between america and india even though you have mentioned a lot what is the difference and do you miss anything that is in india that's not available there uh, yeah i do miss india at times i miss the indian festivals hmm. i really miss onam and a few food items uh, i must say that we get almost all the food items here as well uh, what we get back in india we have a lot of indian grocery stores so that's not a problem uh, but i miss the carefree life that i had in india uh, so i had lot of time uh and i could cook whatever i wanted and i was relaxed but now mm. the student life you have deadlines you are running behind deadlines uh 
assignments projects so uh, i miss the festivals and that carefree life other mm-hmm. than that uh, it's okay obviously i miss my family that's what everyone misses and the main difference is the time zone difference mm-hmm. uh, that really hurts at times because when you are about to sleep your parents and your relatives wake up and then when you wake up they are about to sleep and in between there is a time when they are sleeping and you cannot contact them mm-hmm. uh maybe because it's just one month so eventually i think that i'll get adjusted mm mm-hmm. okay and what are your future plans uh so right now i told you that i'm specializing specializing in renewable energy so i'm focusing on uh, energy analyst role uh, wherein i can develop new renewable energy technology Uh, i am also interested in carbon capture and uh, hydrogen fuel mm mm-hmm. so these are the three areas that i am focusing on uh, i guess i would be able to figure it out more over the uh, due course of time okay okay last one do you have anything else to say from your heart no questions nothing whatever you want to say do you have anything to say yeah anything okay. do so uh, it would be a message to all the students who are preparing for this masters admission there were so many days when i got really disheartened uh i couldn't write a word i couldn't prepare my sop i was uh, i was staring at a blank page and then you check all the sops in the, in the internet and you feel that oh they have done so much they have done this their internship is here The, the this is their project work what ha- what have i done would i ever get admission uh, but when you feel disheartened just take a break talk to yourself and try to remember whatever you have done so it's the experience that they always want what you know your knowledge and your experience even if you have done a project uh, done a small project but if you have gained some experience and knowledge from that and if you can talk confidently about that project just put it in your sop and never lie please don't lie in your sop or resume and uh, during the application process uh, it feels really long and tiring because you apply and then you have to wait for the uh, offer letters to come uh, initially you may not get a few offer letters uh but uh, be patient and also keep a track of the uh, deadline so few universities they have a very early deadline like their application deadline closes in december itself then some other universities have it in january and a few universities uh, they have the deadline till april or may so plan your process accordingly suppose you apply to few universities which had deadlines in december and if you already got your admit then you may not then you need not apply in those universities with a later deadline so you mm-hmm. can save your time and application fees as well so if you have some planning ahead then uh, that would be really helpful also while applying to the universities uh, please don't look at the application fees and oh my god i'm losing this much of money uh, no once you come to us or any other foreign country money so uh please don't be very stingy about the about that money and also try to l- try looking for scholarships and talk to people in linkedin you never know when someone can be of help i got the details about my scholarship from someone in linkedin talk to your seniors and uh, that's all i have that's what i would like to tell everyone and uh, mm-hmm. and take your ielts preparation as well seriously uh uh it would be difficult to manage everything uh but with uh, some planning and little effort little bit of effort uh it it would be it would be a cake work there is nothing impossible uh it's only it just that it takes little bit of effort mm-hmm. okay so thank you so thank much you. this was really resourceful okay no? thank you thank you thank you so much <laughs> Yep. It was a pleasure talking to you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found it really informative. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Harshit Ji, also known as Celestial. That must be the name that you know. I'm an IELTS and PT trainer, and I do all this stuff. Much more. Okay. 
So if you found this helpful, share it with your friends and other people who are planning for the US. You know, many of you are, maybe will be from Telangana, Andhra Pradesh or somewhere who are planning for the US. Usually you guys plan for US. Yeah, others do also. Okay, just comment down where you are from and how this video was for you. Okay, if you want more of these kind of videos, support me. Okay, and more about what we do at Celeste Alliance. We provide coaching for IELTS, PTE and OET. Apart from that, we provide service, um, SOP writing services, VESA assistance and visa. If you are planning to get PR or something immigration, in that case, you can contact us for Canada or any other country. Okay. So once again, thank you so much for watching. One more thing. We are on Instagram and Telegram. If you are not already over there and following me, go and follow them. Okay. It means a lot. So that's all about this video. Tata, bye bye. See you in the next video.